I actually did vote for the $87 billion before I voted against it. Uh, that was John Kerry uh, on March 16th, 2004, during an appearance at Marshall University, uh, which I think he was, he later described it as an inarticulate moment. <laughs> which, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, man. That's uh, so funny. But it sounds like what he was actually trying to say was I voted for it to advance maybe out of committee, but once it got to a floor vote, he voted against it to uh, in protest of Bush's, uh, about yeah. how Bush was handling yeah. uh, his Iraq policies. Yeah. yeah, but it's not very clear. Uh, not very it's clear, not no, not in that moment. It seems like you're saying two opposite things. Yes. Um, well, this is uh, second in command of Veep Rewatch. Ooh, we have a new tagline. It's uh, second in command of Veep Rewatch. A questionable a que podcast. A questionably accurate Question podcast. From Outsiders Insider. From the Outsiders Insiders. From the Outsiders Insiders. I would almost say from the Veeps of Veep. From the Veeps it, of Veep? Meaning like Veep was like disrespected and mm -hmm. we were like even further so like we less were, important. We were that the Veeps of that Veep. We were I know it's confusing. It's, it's not great, but it's concise. I mean, it's still better. It's still better than the latter thing. You A didn't like the latter A questionably accurate podcast. Questionably accurate podcast. I think the Veeps of Veep is too many Veeps. I think that's too many Veeps. But I do think that there's something to the Outsiders Insiders. From the Outsiders. From the Outsiders Insiders. Because that is a thing from the show. Anyway, guys, we're yeah. still working okay. on it. But we're there. We're closer. We're definitely closer. Some people love the struggle of this. They I'm, don't even care about the outcome of what we come up with. They like the struggle that daily the, we're trying to make the tagline it's better. It's the journey, not the destination. Yeah, I'm with uh, you. Welcome to Second in Command of Veeb Rewatch. It's not the journey. It's not the destination. It's the journey. I'm Tim Simons, and I played Jonah Ryan. I'm Matt Walsh, and I played Mike McClintock. And uh, we will today, we are going to be rewatching Season 3, Episode 5, Fishing, with Diedrich Bader, who played Bill Erickson. Just curious, who directed and wrote this one? Do we have oh, that in front of us somewhere? Let's throw that up. This, oh, this was definitely this was directed by Becky Martin. Yep. And uh, written by Georgia Pritchett, Will Smith, and Armando Iannucci. Filmed in November of 2013. Yeah, that makes sense. It was really cold. See, they're being more honest now. They're saying a whole month. Yeah, they're saying them. They, they usually say like very... November 14th to November 16th. Well, they being uh, our research staff. Thank you, Arvin, for that. Um, all right, should we get yeah. to Dietrich? We're very excited about Dietrich being on. He plays Bill Erickson, and he's such an interesting, funny, smart dude. Uh, yeah, love him, and this is uh, Bill's first appearance. Uh, first appearance on screen after being spoken of for a bunch of episodes. Here right. we go. Uh, we're incredibly excited to have Mr. Bill Erickson in the house. Bill Erickson in the house. <laughs> Mr. Dietrich Bader. Uh -huh. Can you, now, pronounce your name for, I've known you for many years. Yeah. yeah. Dietrich Bader. Yeah, you nailed it. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's Diedrich. no T in it. That most people make that mistake. Okay, because like they pronounce it like Marlena, like Dietrich. With the T. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no T anywhere in my name. I noticed it's Died Rich. Died which, Rich. Yeah, yeah it's a, a it's neat. an aspiration. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my goal too. I I don't know why it should be a goal though. At the same time, because yeah, because it I'm doesn't dead. matter. Yeah. can't take yeah. it with you. Mm, that's what they say. That's Just give what they it say. to the kids. Did I tell you? We what? have talked about this on the show before. Mm. That we have this thing called Shimizu Heat. Okay, oh which my is gosh. like it's like a Q rating, but is specific to our former dentist. <laughs> Let me give you some background. Okay. So when Tim and I were first becoming friends in LA, I yeah. would constantly run into people who are like, "Oh, Veep, you're, yeah," and I already knew them, but they're like Tim Simons, like, "Oh, I know Tim. Oh, he's a he's a great guy." Like everybody I was meeting, yeah was telling me what a great guy uh, Tim, Tim Simons was. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. I get it. He's a fucking, like, yeah, after a while, I was it's sick a little of it. Much. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. I get it. He's a great guy. Why do you it always feels me? a little bit like in contrast to yourself. Like, yeah, a like, little bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and also like, why yeah. are you burdening me with this information? Right, like, right, right, right. they're reminding me he's a yeah. great guy. So right. I, I would always joke with Tim. I'm like, I'm so sick of people telling me you're a great guy. Yeah. And lo and behold, I was in the dentist chair uh -huh. and Tim and I had the same dentist. Oh. I didn't even know about it. Okay. And he started telling me about Tim Simons, right. this other guy on Veep, right. and what a nice guy he is. Oh, so okay. I, I couldn't get away from it. And like then, as the chair is being put down, yeah. he's like, so you know Tim Simons? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so what we talked about with the Shimizu, so his name was Dr. Shimizu, oh, a lovely Shimizu. man, okay. uh, down in Wilshire, really yeah. great 
Dennis, but the Shimizu heat specifically is this idea that like if your career is going well, yes. that's when Shimizu comes into the room to maybe give a, an he'll extra. He'll tap out the dental he'll, assistant. Right. And maybe he'll oh. get in there and do some nitty gritty that right. he, he wants, wouldn't have done if you don't yeah. have the Shimizu heat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if he's not coming in, that means that your maybe career is- you don't have the heat. <laughs> you know what's, there's so many yeah. things that are fascinating about that. Um, <laughs> it is absolutely one of the truths that you are treated better if you are on a television show that is doing well. Yes. Yes. If no one is watching that show, it doesn't really matter if you're on a show or not. No. Yes. Um, My dad, um, who, as you guys know, uh, worked in Washington, D.C. He was chief of staff for the Senate Foreign Relations Committee during the Carter administration Um, and a a bunch of other jobs. He ended up being um, at the State Department under Secretary of State. And you grew up in D.C. Outside, Alexandria, Virginia. Okay. But in the... In the world of politics, in the bubble. Absolutely in the world of politics. Yeah. This is something that we talked about all the time. Um, Because just like in show business, you talk about show business if you're in that business. So, and it did prepare me for the vagaries, for the shifting sands of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And um, because... When you're in charge, when there's, uh, my dad was a Democrat. When the Democrats were in charge, all of a sudden he was like, you know, a prince. Mm -hmm. We went to all the parties at embassies. We uh, were feted. We had senators over to our house. Um, You know, everybody was always. Tickets to games, et cetera. So um, I remember being little and, uh, and, you know, riding in the back of the car because I used to go to his office and do my homework. All the senators would come in and have drinks. My dad had a full bar in his office. (laughs) And uh, the only Joe Biden would come in one drink and then he'd split because he had to hit the train to get back to Delaware. Anyway, it was very nice to me. The only one who remembered my name. Four years, these guys saw me almost all the time. No one remembered my name except Joe Biden. Oh, that's awesome. Which is kind of irritating at the same time. Good story about Joe Biden. Was this Friday drinks or every night there were drinks? It's D.C. in the 70s. I don't know. It's it's kind of every every night. night. It's kind (laughs) of every afternoon. Cocktail hour. Okay. Yeah. Let's face it. It was a different time. Um, It wasn't frowned upon for you to be actively drunk. Yeah. Um, Anyway, the point I wanted to make was uh, on the drive home, my, I was like, that was really cool, you know, that everybody comes by and whatever. And my dad was, went, uh, well, I have the magic hat. And I was like, what does that mean? And he goes, well, the magic hat is power. And when you wear the magic hat, everybody really loves you. Um, but it can come off. And the hat stays the same, but it's handed to someone else. That's a great way to teach yes. a kid about yeah. uh, fame or power. Right. Because one of the things that was hard for my wife after the Drew Carey show was that we got significantly less invitations. Yeah. And uh, people that she thought were friends were Mm -hmm. really, they were friends of the hat. Yeah, 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 yeah. They liked the hat. Um, And I said, it's okay. It's ultimately okay. I'll probably get the hat back at some point and then these guys will call us and we'll go to their dinner parties and it'll be great again. Um, and she's like, but that's not a friend. I don't know. It is a friend, but it's just different rules. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Um, and when I did Veep, I had no hat. Um, and Veep fundamentally changed my life. You got the hat back on a little bit? I got the hat back on. Awesome. When I walked into American Housewife, the first thing Kenny Schwartz said, was the showrunner. was, oh, I saw you on Veep. You were really good on it. I was like, ah, I've got the hat. Ah, uh, you knew it right then. Yeah, because it's a matter of perception. That's the, she- that's yeah. the Shimizu heat. That's what that's we call the Shimizu, Shimizu heat. heat. Is the magic yeah. hat. That's, it's yeah. the same yeah. thing. He's only taking care of you because you have the hat on. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's totally true. It happens all the time. This town is based on it, but most towns are. But, okay. I was going to say that, Go like, uh, it just, like, uh, to, to make it sort of sentimental, that actually is, again, a really good thing. I mean, whatever. We live in a factory town. We do factory work. That's it. We, that is a good way of explaining it to kids. And then I'll be able to go to my kids using that analogy yeah. and say, like, who are you or who is your dad when the hat's not on? Like, yeah. that's what matters. Right, right. You course. might wear the hat and the hat does what it's going to yeah. do. But what, if the hat comes off, who are you? And that's that's who we should be judging 100%. each other. And how do you stay true to yourself the yes. entire time? And what's I mean, interesting, you know, when Reagan was elected, uh, we oh, lost changed. the Senate. 
Um, my dad was, you know, shit can He was just fired. Yeah, that was because uh, it's like you know, there's no spoils of war. There's no chief of staff of the minority. Yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. They're not like, hey, we got you know Bill no. here, so yeah, come we on. We won. In. Bring you, our old boys in. Right. We're not gonna. But we're the, not gonna listen to the thing about say. the fame hat is I yeah. remember like in the heyday of Veep when everybody wants to ask you about the show and the process and they're loving it. I can remember specifically going into an audition for a movie and it was a casting director who basically wanted to talk to me for like 30 minutes about the show. Mm. And I knew the minute the conversation went past five minutes, I wasn't going to get the part. No, 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 no. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's I totally the other side of it is it's like, I know why she likes me. I know why she's interested in the show. And it was a friendly conversation, but the longer the conversation went, I knew like, oh, I'm never going to get this part. And there's something about the fame hat yeah. that once they meet you, it's not going to equal the expectation of what, no, it never does. of what the thing is they're in love with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's almost like I would have been better served not to go in the room or not have the conversation. Yeah. And a little bit. It's, it's difficult to shut the conversation down. No, you can't. And it's I enjoyed it. Impossible. She was a very nice yeah. woman. It's always nice to hear nice things. Of course. There's nothing wrong with that. At the same time, Sometimes uh, you're there get... to try to get a job. Of course. Yeah. And, and I uh, knew in my yeah. heart, like, this has been three minutes too long already. Like, I'm never getting this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, that's the converse side of the magic hat, a little bit. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Walshy, yo, one, two, three, let's hear it for the moms. Amen. Women keep this world together. Whether they are new mothers, grandmothers, or an honorary mom in your life, much like Arvin is to us, we know that they deserve the best all year round. So give them a gift that they will cherish for years to come with Brooklinen's cozy bedding, towels, and other home essentials. Arvin, get ready for some home essentials. Selena Meyer is essentially America's mom. I just want to say, I got me some Brooklinen's, and not only was I happy, even happier was my wife, Morgan. She's such a fan, and they're just wonderful. Annie, my wife? Yeah. Big fan. We got the window pane. California king-size window pane. Ah, uh, unbelievable. Yeah, it's classy, and it's it's beautiful. And it's comfy. So, Brooklinen, home of the Internet's favorite sheets, was created in 2014 to give customers luxury hotel-level home essentials that don't break the bank. They offer everything from snugly bedding to cozy towels and robes, loungewear, accessories, and much, much more. And by working with suppliers directly, Brooklyn and cuts out the luxury markups and passes those savings back to their customers. So you get their incredible products at a reasonable cost. And if you need the extra nuts, check out the five-star reviews, over 100,000 of them, which I guess means 500,000 stars for these sheets. Yes, you heard that right, 100,000 five-star reviews. That's what our podcast aspires to. So gift the comfort refresh they deserve and get it for less at Brooklinen. Go to brooklinen.com and use promo code VEEP to get $20 off your purchase of $100 or more. Yeah, that's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and enter promo code V V E E P for 20 bucks off. Brooklinen, the curators of comfort. Hey, everybody, this is Tim just jumping in real quick to say that if you want to ask specific questions, you can leave us a voicemail at castmedia.com slash second in command. And uh, we love getting those questions. So please submit them. Uh, this We are obviously talking about season three, episode five, episode of five. the television show. V. Changed my life. <laughs> this actually, this was a, a wonderful uh, reminder uh, because now I have known you long enough that I had forgotten that part about your history, but you coming into this show were someone who, uh, w you were somebody who had a deep knowledge of the inner workings of DC. You had that ingrained in you and in your bones. And I remember you being, that being a wonderful, a wonderful person to talk to about that. One of the things that I liked about the show, and we were talking about this before we started, um, and uh, revisiting the show. I was telling you guys uh, before we started that uh, I have now been watching it with my kids. The timing of this is just really crazy because we have been re-watching it and, um, and the kids absolutely love it. It's, it's so funny, but it's also... I'll be we honest, earlier, Tim and I track your star meter and you're starting to rise 
and you're getting some heat, that's why we reached out. We actually, that's the we only have a, reason. It's not synchronicity. Guest. It's yeah. not uh, morphic resonance. <laughs> we have a special guest, Dr. Dr. Peter Shemizu. Shemizu. Oh. Come in, sir. <laughs> He's going to do a dental inspection. <laughs> Isn't Tim Simon um, such a great guy? So, um, the thing that I really loved about the show, uh, my daughter was, uh, we were talking about the difference between satire and comedy. Mm -hmm. And obviously, satire is part of the comedic umbrella. But satire is also very specific, in my opinion. And one thing that Veep was able to do, I think, incredibly brilliantly, was show that the mechanics of politics reward uh, myopic views and selfishness. And these characters are 100% selfish people and kind of awful and have... and. One of the great things about it is that it's continually brought up what they can do for people only through the lens of what doing something for people means to them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like how it will affect their career mm -hmm. specifically. And even within the context of the circle, knowing that their, their skewed view is that, they're also continually thinking about their own career. They're not thinking about it as a group like, oh, this is best for Selena or this is best for any of my quote unquote friends that are on here. It's really the prism of what is best for me mm -hmm. and my career path and my career path. Yeah. And every joke sort of revolt with the exception of Gary's character, uh, with the bag. What's this? What am I, who am I thinking? It's of? Gary. Oh, oh, Tony, Gary. Yeah, Tony, 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 Tony. Tony. Yeah. It's Gary the two Gary's that throws people yeah, out. Does yeah. that, right? So Tony's character who is in, entirely selfless. Uh, although you could say because he loves her, he's fulfilling his own. Anyway. Well, he throws other people on the under the bus because they're a threat to his relationship with, with Selena. Yeah, right. So his career isn't really much more than his relationship or access you to Selena. You know what? That's an excellent point. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, so, but it's, here's yeah, the thing less about... less career-related, but yeah. it is still a selfish yeah, act. Yeah, 100%. Know, of all I care about. That's an excellent point. That right? yeah. that. Um, but... What I really love about Veep and, and just having this conversation about satire is that it could actually happen. And if anything, not to get too political, but the Trump administration has proven that it could happen. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's what satire really is. It's, it's taking what we see as reality and saying, um, wow, this this is fucked up how we do this. Like, and, because and, humans are fundamentally flawed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the essence of it. Anyway, yeah. that's, I just wanted to get that. That's good. Do All right, well, I'm going to read an episode synopsis yeah. of this yeah, episode. Uh, it's season three now. Amy and Dan compete for the role of campaign manager while Selena meets with a third candidate, Bill Erickson. Mm -hmm. Mike causes a stir collecting his semen while at work <laughs> for IVF purposes. <laughs> so disgusting. Yeah, it's great. And Gary worries that his shoulder pain may prevent oh, him man. from keeping his job. Meanwhile, Selena, Dan, and Gary travel to Virginia to persuade George Maddox not to run for president. Right. So I just want to say the whole semen thing. We had Armand last week and he had these meetings with us and he's like, is there anything you'd like to see Mike do? And I had a buddy of mine who went through this whole IVF oh. thing where he literally would have to leave work, go to a clinic, masturbate, leave it. And he found, and I ended up telling Arm about like, uh, it'd be fun to have Mike if he had a family life or kids. And I told him this story. And, and so that came a little bit from that, from real life. That, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, never happens. You yeah. never say to an executive producer a funny show thing runner. happened. Or a showrunner. And they, and they go, great, let's put it in the show. Or they never ask you, what do you think this your character was, yeah, should, should do this do. season? What a crazy idea that they would ask that. No one does. No. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> they have their own idea. And even for them, this is obviously casting a wide net. I'm sure there are other executive producers that do this. But in my experience, it's extremely rare um, for them to go and then to actually take what you said and run with it. Yeah. Um, because they generally see it as a threat to them. Yeah. Which it, you could see it that way, I suppose, but it's also this, not. It, it, the, I, I do feel like there was something special that was created through the UK. And maybe it is just because everything generally is on a smaller scale there. Like the, there aren't as many episodes that isn't, a, it's a big industry, but it isn't the type of money that people make over here. It's very much, it seems very much like a lizard brain fight or flight 
thing. It's just trying to protect what's there. And over there, they're like, yeah, we all work together. Yeah. I mean, what are, we're all like, we get, we're getting paid $20. Yeah. It's like, also, what are, what are we going to fight? Over? Yeah. What are you? Come on. Like, I'm going to get yeah. 17 yeah. and you're going to, it's also, you know. I think there's no craft service. Yeah. It's there's like, no craft service. Yeah. It's also from, yeah, there's less money being thrown around. Yeah. Absolutely true. Cra- British craft service. Not great. Yeah. Or it wasn't eight years ago when we were in England, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. The other part is there's a lot more writer performers inside British shows. It's very yeah. common for like the actors in the loop to also, or not in the loop, the uh, uh, thick of it, for example, Lately, to yeah. also be like on Chris. the writing yeah. staff. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that also like melds the sort of we mentality or like collaborative mentality that's yeah. truer to British shows perhaps. Because in America, it's like the writers point. are here. Yeah. Actors are here. Exec producers Completely order gym shoes well. and yeah. Video Village and yeah. try to plan birthday parties for their children. This episode starts with a really wonderful thing of all these characters giving a little pep talk to the vol- the staffers in yeah. the office. Mm-hmm. And it was from a writing standpoint, mm-hmm. I had completely forgotten about this. From a writing standpoint, every single one of those little pitches or rah-rah speeches was such a perfect distillation of each of those characters. Like I was, it was pretty remarkable how the writers were able to do that because it went from Gary talking about the only things that can truly change the world are fluoride and war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gary talking about, uh, uh, Kent, no, you mean? huh? Gary, you said Gary. Oh, sorry. Kent, I'm sorry. Uh, Tony Hale, uh, yeah. Gary, oh, uh, yeah, Gary talking oh, yeah. about, um, uh, so it was Kent talking about fluoride. Okay. Uh, Gary talking about how she asks for chamomile chamomile tea, but she, but re- she doesn't want that. She wants peppermint, <laughs> and about and also no eye contact. And then to uh, three microwaves, Mike. Mike, it's talking about. You might think three microwaves is too much, but don't forget <laughs> tapas. Tapas, <laughs> and and Amy is talking about don't line. fuck yeah. up, like don't ever fuck up. Uh, Dan says don't something. Don't ever fuck up. That's great advice. Don't ever fuck up. Yeah. I. Uh, it just. But the the kicker is the mic joke there, mm-hmm. and it is so perfectly crafted to each character. And yeah. the fact that you bring up it has nothing to do with the campaign. It yeah, has yeah. nothing to do with winning. And it has nothing to do with strategy. Yeah, yeah. And strategy. he's also being intentionally funny, which Mike likes to do. Like yes. he's going tapas. Like he yeah, knows yeah, it's yeah. a jokey right. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, but he also means it. He does mean it, 100%. Yeah. That's one of the great things about Mike's jokes 100%. is that he's, he's kind of telling a joke, but he's also like, you know, I kind of... <laughs> he I really, sees it that way, yeah, too. Yeah, he does, yeah. He's now, co- sort of pitching it as a joke, but he knows he means it. It does mean it. <laughs> yeah. The other person we met is Joe Thornhill. I just want to say that yes. that's yeah, someone yeah, yeah. that we met season before season one. He was an American living in London, huh. and he did a bunch of script reads with us. Huh. Very funny man. Arvin, could you look up Joe Thornhill's name unless you have it? I don't have it offhand. Really funny man who eventually came back in season three. And we always point out Arm and the team always remember people. Uh Like Dan Backall was supposed to be in In the Loop and he couldn't do it. Oh, no, really? For real. And he was bummed he couldn't do it because he loved Armando and his work. And then because and his agents like, no, you got to do this other thing, whatever. And, and then lo and behold, our arm remembered him for furlong. So it's kind of this thing. That's of really like, cool. They kind of remember people who get in front of them. I auditioned for a different part. Who did you originally tell audition us? For? I think was Barry Bostwick on the show. I'm not remembering. I don't no. think so. I don't think so. Um, it was a senator that she had a. I can't remember because I haven't. I haven't seen it in a while. Um, but I auditioned to play a senator. And uh, is I it Doyle? The, uh, was it like not Doyle, the one who's like the Southern guy who wants to build a wall? Like, is he a little racist? No, I don't that think so. That senator? No. Okay. I don't think so. I, I, I really no strictly idea. don't remember because I was given the uh, sides the night before. Sure. And I had already promised the kids I was going to take them to the beach. And then I tried to learn the sides at the beach, which was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, and uh, it just didn't work. But I didn't want to let my kids out. I mean, no, you, of course. Uh, no, yeah. this is, I mean, like, I'm, I'm laughing with familiarity. Oh, no, no, of, no, no, like, no. Because no. you're a parent and it's like, yes. So what am I going to tell them? They're out of school and it's summertime. And I was like, uh, yeah, no, we're still, of course, dad's taking you to the beach. 100%. And then I was like, the sides are flipping Sandy up. Sandy and you know, no, blowing like, away. What the fuck? And then it was the same day, right? So and then I had to go in and I was oh, sunburned. All beached, tired too. You're all Didn't sun-tired. know the sides. Walked in and I was terrible. At the, I was terrible. I didn't know a thing. And at the end of it, 
uh, I said to Julia, uh, that was awful. <laughs> and she goes, what? And I go, no, that was really bad. And I'm sorry. And she goes, that's okay. And I go, it's really not because I really like the show and I, I wanted to do a better job. Wow. But I just didn't. I just didn't. And, and she goes, okay, well, do you want to improvise? And I go, <laughs> yeah. That's how, I, then no one had ever asked me that in an audition. So we improvised together. And then she's, of course, uh, as you guys know, she's a fucking genius. Yeah. And um, so we just kind of made up the whole thing. Was that for Bill Erickson or was no, that, that, was, that was the senator. previous one? It was a senator. And um, Armando stood up and went, okay, let's do it one more time. But, um, you know, he did this little tweaky thing and I was like, okay, because it's an improv, but yeah, we could do it again. Sure. I mean, you know, so we improvised again and Julia goes, did you, did anyone get else get a sexual thing going on? And I was like, I didn't, I don't know what was happening. <laughs> and um, then, uh, then I was like, okay, great. They were like, okay, fantastic. Oh, good for you. And I said, uh, well, thanks. I just want you to, to know that I obviously did a terrible job, <laughs> but that it was a real pleasure to meet you, um, all of you, because you're great. And uh, obviously, Julia, I'm a fan. And Armando, uh, I'm Alan Partridge, uh, was just... Yeah. That's uh, the one for me that really like hooked me on Armando. Absolutely. Oh my, oh my God. Are you yeah. kidding me? My yeah. wife and I watched it on BBC America when they had like, they put it all together. This is pre-kids. It was on a Saturday or whatever. And we got four episodes in and we just decided, I guess this is what we're doing. So yeah. we just like. Binged. Yeah. We just had it like, yeah, we binged. It was pre like binge time when that was a thing. Yeah. But we opened up some champagne. We just drank champagne. It was great. We watched the entire series. It was like a great experience as a couple because we laughed so fucking hard. And one of the great things about it was as far as the trajectory of the character, like in an American show, almost every mo American movie about someone who realizes uh, that they're on a downward trajectory, they hit bottom, they realize it, they work their way up through self-work and also apologies, and then they ultimately come out to be a better person and more successful. That is not what happened. <laughs> yeah. And the realization that he was going down, like <laughs> all the way down, like it's, it's only going to get worse mm -hmm. and he's behaving worse. Yeah. <laughs> was one of those great, v great realizations in watching. It was as great as, um, rogue one at the end when I realized they're the ones that are the, uh, at great cost, yeah. you know, mm, yeah. that great cost. I look, yeah. get chills. Like they're the ones yeah. when they say, when it was brought to them yeah. at great cost, they're the cost. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Oh my God. And it was the it was same feeling, huh? uh, when I realized that Alan Partridge was just going to go like, he, he, no, things are going to get worse for him. And then they're going to stay bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's like the genius of Armando. And, I didn't say all of that to him. I just said, I'm a fan of Alan Partridge because why would I, in a room... Like, yeah, it was like, no, but here's the thing. My wife and I, we had champagne and... no, hang with so me. much it was smoke. Yeah. Have you guys seen Rogue One? All right. Well, yeah, all right, similarly. similarly. All right, it's uh, yeah, a good hasn't, hasn't been shot yet, but <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, I then went home to Dulce and I was like, oh, I, I fucked it. Uh -huh. I fucked it up. And she goes, I feel bad because uh, I didn't say to you Veep is more important than taking the kids to the beach. And, uh, I was like, okay, we both feel bad, which is the great thing about this experience. <laughs> and uh, we're going to continue like, to watch the show. Like I, then I didn't get it. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I get that I didn't get it. I, I, I wouldn't have given me the part either. Yeah. So when I got the call, I was like, yeah, I mean, I fucked it up. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. It's not the end of the world. At the same time, like I was saddened by it because... It's not like, you know, a guest star spot on a regular show. Um, it's a show you cared about. Yeah. It's not like, uh, you know, where you're like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> I do think, and I mean, looking where it 
ended up with you coming on as Bill Erickson. And now not just for like an episode where you play a guy who straight talks Selena across a table. Yeah. You then ultimately get brought in as part of the team. Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, like you are then around in the show yeah. mm-hmm. all the way till the very last episode. Like yeah. I do think that I, I, it's hard to... It's hard to explain both to myself and I think to other like I, I make I make a very good show of ex- acting like I, I inherently know this that like things do work out for a reason. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's kind of bullshit, but also yeah. like it feels like it when you look back. Yes, yeah. right? in oh. the moment it's yeah. like no, no fuck that. No. I would have rather just gotten that yeah. first one. And but not right. so good for you for being yourself in the room and calling yourself out. Like oftentimes you leave a room like that or a moment like that with your tail between your legs and you don't say anything. You just sort of were your authentic self and going, I just want to say that was terrible. <laughs> yeah. I love your show yeah. and you should hate me and yeah. I'm a terrible dummy. Uh, really? And then lo and I didn't behold, say, like, that, I'm not going to no. ex- get the job. No, I mean, but I that you know. honesty led yeah. to like Julia going, would you like to improvise? It just yeah. was a connection where yeah. you, I think that's what I take away from that as well. Is like when, when we're our authentic selves, when we just express what's really going on yeah. or where we're our ugly, truthful, not in a mean, you weren't being mean, but you were just truthfully yourself. Yeah. Sometimes great stuff happens. Stuff, like, yeah. Sometimes you're always, especially in acting, you're always trying to fit into what they want. It's like, fuck it. And 100%. I, and then I got an offer for Bill. Yeah. Like, yeah, I didn't go in and audition for Bill. I just and got do you it. think that was a year later or same season? What's your gut I say? It was probably a year later. It was probably I mean, a different this, season. So uh, Arvin pulled it up. Arvin, thank you for that. Glenn Rage. Uh, Glenn Raj? Rage? Oh, yeah, maybe. W-R-A-G-E. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. So he was he was there in the room doing script reads, script rehearsals, workshops yeah. in between shooting the pilot and the first season. So this, we are now three seasons, like we're now two full years later. Yeah. And Arm has remembered him from the UK rehearsals wow. of the first season. That's yeah. impressive. And has brought him over to play Joe Thornhill. Yeah. And Glenn, he said that he he was a very American guy. Like you can tell, you know, by his accent in the show. He's a very American guy mm. living. And he had like the market cornered on sort of like American dudes in British, British shows. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and Arm just remembered him and two full years later brings him back in to be Thornhill. When I got the call, I actually couldn't believe it. Um, I was like, seriously? After that audition, they're just going to offer me something? Wow. Um, and then uh, and then I got the script and I was like, oh my God, it's a great part. Yeah. 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 Because Bill Erickson has been teased for a few episodes already. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Like I think in the first in the episode, first episode yeah. he's mentioned. Ben comes in the hotel rooms. Get Bill Erickson. Don't worry yeah. about Dan, yeah. Amy. Get Bill Erickson. Right. Yeah. And then I think throughout he says it again, Bill Erickson. So there's a yeah. lot of fanfare about your entrance yeah, into the show. Yeah, it's a great build up, and then the script yeah. was fantastic, and and um, you know, I got a little nervous because the script wasn't nailed down. <laughs> if I could put that <laughs> written, yeah, yeah, finalized. I mean, I said yes to many words. Anything, sure. Um, so they, you got it that morning, right before the scene. I got it that morning. Of course you did. Of course no, no, no. Did. The night before, but then the morning they it was changed almost it changed all of them. again. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Which I I thought was just because they were unclear on where Bill was going or what the scene. But then I learned later that's kind of like the style, and that I should just. Um, you don't commit to memory. You just sort of loosely understand the scene yeah. and then put it away because you know it'll be different yeah. tomorrow. And so um, I realize this is completely off topic and you pro- no, guys probably no, I love embrace it. it. Um, uh, this was an unbelievably welcoming cast. Um, I think, I cannot think, honestly, of any other show that I've been on, maybe other than The Fresh Prince, which was probably the same level of warmth. Aww, but, oh, that's cool. That's um, sweet. That, we're the, so the, well the new one, the the, the new gritty, no, right. reboot. the dark That's one. That's the one you're That's talking right. about, right? Um, that was so welcoming and warm and open, and that you guys just invited me to things, and uh, that never happens with guest stars, like on location. People don't just go, "Hey, you want to hang out?" I was like, "Me," <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, but it sounds like I'm going to contradict what I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but there were but two the competition of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. was there. <laughs> but I was always feeling because you guys were so great, so epically good, and I was a real fan of the show. I was continually nervous, and uh, through I, like multiple episodes, I'd say uh, into coming on as a recurring 
uh, in that season where I did a lot of episodes. Uh, okay. I was nervous three, four episodes in. Wow. Extremely nervous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, so nervous that I couldn't sleep. Um, I would be up literally for the entire night. Wow. Just freaking out in bed because I didn't want to fuck it up. And I, I was wow. so happy to be there. And I didn't want to let anybody down. And the way you got wow. shot was very not... Um, so for listeners or everybody that's watching, usually a show does a master and then they get into coverage. But in Veep, there were multiple cameras happening at the same time. So, uh, and there were very long shots where everybody was together. I didn't want to let anybody down. And I felt like I was both part of the team and not part of the team. So it was, I was nervous continually. Yeah. And part of it was that I never got my lines. <laughs> and, um, you know, there were days where, uh, you know, Gary Cole and I, for example, uh, on the, um, Iran episode, mm -hmm. uh, where we, uh, I didn't get in until the, the morning of, yeah. and then we got in the van together and we ran our lines as best we could. And then we got there and they handed us pages and we were like, oh, we got them uh, from the thing. And he goes, no, it's different. Yeah. And then we were like, oh, okay. Uh, so we started running those lines and this is a true story. Then we get to the set and Chris is like, did you get the new lines? And I said, yeah, that's a terrible Chris impression, by the way. He's from <laughs> Manchester. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I, I was like, well, could I have another biscuit? <laughs> um, pitch but, uh, was high. He has a little yeah. higher pitch. Um, yeah. but anyway, uh, he goes, did you get the new, uh, you know, uh, pages? And I said, uh, yeah, we did. And he goes, let me take a look. And he looks and he goes, those are the old pages. <laughs> From the time that we've gotten into makeup till the time that we were shooting, the pages Well, the third yeah, version. Third draft. Yeah. My yeah. wife ended up doing the show last season, like one of the last episodes. And it was last minute, the night before. They're like, oh my God, we haven't cast this. And so Morgan got to play like a nice oh, part, awesome. small yeah. part. Fantastic. She's so nervous, obviously. Course, she yeah. grew up in the show. She's like friends with everyone. Uh -huh. Loves everyone. Oh, everyone yeah. loves it's a Morgan. big deal that you're just like out. you. She would never want to let all these lovely people down. That's right. That's exactly where she was. So, so she stayed up the night before, boned up, ready to go. Gets through makeup. They're walking her to set, and they give her brand new lines. Yeah, <laughs> completely different lines. Yeah, they were completely different. Completely. Different. I actually asked Chris. I go, "What's the percentage on?" Because I, I was like, "What's the percentage on how how much is new?" And he was like. 90? <laughs> and I was like, so our names and punctuation? And You're goes, still Bill Erickson. All right. um, but, uh, so we got through the first scene, all right, and then we got into the second scene. And I I was, before we shot, I was standing in the corner like this. And uh, Gary uh, Cole comes up and he goes, are you, you know, are you all right, D? And I go, uh, I don't know my lines. I don't know my lines. And I just don't know them. And uh, Gary goes, nobody knows deadlines. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good Gary Cole. That's a good Gary Cole. <laughs> it made me feel so much better <laughs> because n I hadn't expressed what was really making me nervous about working with you guys. And because I, I just hadn't said it. Right. Um, and I was ashamed of myself that I wasn't able to pick up lines as quickly as I saw all of you picking up your lines. And him saying that, I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Because now I know you don't know your lines. We're just going to do the best we can. And the rest of the time, I had a good time. Yeah. So much of the, we were, I was just having this conversation with some friends at dinner. So much of the world would be better if we got rid of the statement, I'm okay. Because we're constantly saying like, I'm okay. Like we're keeping, no, there's a we're lie. keeping what's lie. going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're struggling like crazy and you're freaking out because you don't know your lines. Yeah. But you're kind of going, I'm okay. I'm yeah. okay. I was 100% doing But that. if we get rid of that and just be like, I'm It only not. added to my nervousness because <laughs> yeah. I was pretending, even in chatting with you guys when we were on the set. Yeah. Like I wasn't trying to run my lines in the back of my yeah. head. You know? Yeah. And you guys were so warm and welcoming and I really wanted to get to know everybody that I wanted to talk to you guys. But at the same time, I was like, is, that, is there any way we could just run our lines? And um, later, I, ask, I, I would ask you guys, and you'd be like, yeah, all right. And I mean, <laughs> it would have been really easy for me to do that earlier. Yeah, yeah. But you're pretending to be okay. But I was pretending to be okay. Yeah. I like that in when we talk about the buildup to Bill Erickson. Yeah. Because yeah. we are, I 
honestly, after the mention, because I haven't seen it, I hadn't seen the third season recently, after the mention of Bill Erickson in the first episode, it, I was like, oh, that's right, Bill Erickson shows up in the yeah. first episode. And then when he did, I was like, oh, well, he's got to come in in two or three. Like, no, we just like, we build up oh, yeah, to you. Yeah, I know, it's great. Including lines like this one. Bill is like Amy without the conscience and Dan without the 5% that needs to be loved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, that is such what I love about the character is that you have all that build up yeah. and you manage to pay it off with your like with your very direct and not unfriendly, not yeah. Not well not necessarily friendly, but not unfriendly and not intentionally cruel mm -mm. but the directness that bill erickson has yeah. immediately yeah. is incredible the fact that you're also interrupting her is pretty great well like there's a competency the, too yeah, i'll just yes it, there's an implied competency to you like it's interesting that you and kent you're talking about iran like i kent seemingly is good at his job one of the themes we yeah, always yeah, talk yeah. about is who's good at their job bill erickson is good at his job. So there's tremendous competency and you're speaking from experience the minute we meet you. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the things that I always thought Bill bonded the most with Kent and the yes. writers really picked that up and put us together a lot. And Gary and I ended up being real friends because of that, yeah. because we were leaning on each other a lot. And as yeah. you know, I mean, it's, as we were just describing it, it wasn't incredibly simple show to do. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, because they were both really competent in a, in a group of <laughs> not competent, you, you, you know. Yeah, they're getting there. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're they try there. and they God try. Bless them. So I want to point out one line that yeah. I love too. Yeah. It's like so we Tim and I talk about like there's certain comedy gold moments like Arm loves having people in lanky men in suits run through hallways. That's always yes, going to make you laugh. Really or, funny, yeah. Or being on a phone call when somebody's already hung up and you're you're sort of still talking, <laughs> yeah, and, like, and they're like, oh, they've gone. Like yeah, that, no, yeah. Every he does it time, all the time. Every single time. Yeah. And there's a line in here every single time. Time. There's because a line in here that's life. like saying, we're going to have to be funny here, where she says, like, honestly, if I could say what I want to say, this is what I'd say. Like, that's the beginning of we better deliver on a funny line, yeah. quite honestly. Yeah, yeah, Selena's yeah, yeah. saying it to Ben, and she goes, Mississippi's chock full of assholes, and I don't trust those Chinese. Yeah, and I don't trust the Chinese. <laughs> like... That's just and classic. Hilarious. And Ben's joy yeah. at hearing ha, ha, ha. That. Like he is, he, oh, like, he is Kevin just, was great with that. Yeah. Dan is sort of actively campaigning to be came, a campaign manager. Uh, there's a scene where that's introduced the IVF thing. And as somebody that went through IVF, not myself yeah. personally, they didn't implant them in me. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I will, I, I will say that like there are, there are inconsistencies with yes. how IVF actually works in this, yes. in that, the uh, one thing, they give you options. You can go to the place and you can jerk off into a cuff at their office. But then it's really like a lot of social contract stuff of like, here is a, a closet. Yeah. That, and then you go in there and then you come out with this. And they all know what happened. We're all just pretending that it's not happening. Or you can bring it from home. Yeah. But then you have to actually, so you don't want to keep it cold. You don't, they, like, it needs to be kept body temperature so you have to keep the vial of semen like in your, in your arm under your armpit or like in between your legs as you're driving right. to the oh. thing but then so it's either you go to the office and you go into the closet at, at, with the just everybody there knowing what you're doing or the privacy of your own home but then you have to drive across town mm -hmm. sperm in your armpit. with your with sperm in your armpit. And there's yeah. really a I mean, no it's not like that hasn't happened, but it'd be awkward if you got into an accident. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And like, you know, what do you get pulled over? Sure. And you're yeah. like, I I yeah. like I'll give you my ID, but yeah, I can't that's crunch. Oh. I've got yes. Yeah. So there is there are some inconsistencies with the actual, but I think the spirit of I there know. is like I think you're right, and also like if Mike's going to a dinner party, he would have to leave and go to the doctor right away. If he just jacked off in the bathroom, yes. he wouldn't lollygag at the dinner yeah, party. Yeah. He would no, split. you gotta you gotta use that right away. Yeah, right. it's, it's gotta be yeah yeah yeah. There's so a, I, I felt the same way too. It was a little, but, but I think the spirit of everything revolving around that process yeah. for that spirit is there because it really does. It's like your entire life is sort. Of, becomes about that. Yeah. It becomes about that. The timing of these things and yeah. when they're going to be put in, and like it's all very specific. So, even though some of the specifics are gone, that uh, I think that is true. True yeah. to life. Uh, yeah. There is a great, 
<laughs> it's a great moment at the beginning of your scene where you say, are you going to order the dessert and then the entree? And then, and then she just like, is like, oh, you're doing everything backwards. Cause you don't have to, can't you started a campaign without a campaign? And she's like, long way to go for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that. Have you guys talked about the creative process of this and how you were, you probably covered. That, yeah. Right? Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, you yeah, can talk sure. about your experience stepping um, into it though. Because um, I had never experienced anything like it. So there's a uh, there's a read through, and then by the that rehearsal. you mean being left in the hotel for two weeks and not knowing what days you were working. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, is, is that, that what you part meant? of the creative process? You're talking <laughs> and then not realizing no, you were I mean, there. Yeah, still of working, flying to Baltimore, <laughs> yeah. staying for ten days, yeah. and, then and then being like, okay, oh, no, you're you, not going to shoot. We didn't for another, need you. We yeah. didn't need you. Why <laughs> no, were you here? Yeah, why are you here? Oh, I missed my son's eighth grade graduation. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the rehearsal process. Yeah. So. Um, unlike literally every television show other than like, si like multicam sitcoms that perform in front of an audience, uh, you do rehearse during that time. But even those are different because they do, there's a read through you meet on like a, I th I, if I remember correctly, it was a Sunday. could have been a Saturday though, too. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you read through it and then, um, do the scenes as if they were really happening. Mm -hmm. So not looking for jokes, not looking for, but just like, what is it? What's your objective? Uh, uh, all the acting stuff. Like, what is this scene actually about? What, what is my character really like? And when you brought up the interruptee guy um, and the going backwards thing during the improv, um, which was, by the way, brilliant because the cast, uh, you guys would like fill in like be yeah know, yeah I'll play yeah. the waiter yeah you we yeah. love that you it was were actually, actually you fun. were actually was. the waiter yeah so um it's I realize it's fun for you but it also just as an actor was like oh my god these guys are all in you know to yeah. to be part of this a true ensemble like okay we're just gonna do it it was like art school or doing a play where you've got eight weeks to rehearse um, because it's like okay let's just get into what's actually happening. Did, did and those... the interrupting thing happened during that time, and they actually brought it up. Did oh, so, so that was something that wasn't in the script that happened in the improv. Happened in the that improv. ended up in I further in, drafts. In, I kept in, in interrupting Julia, and she at some <laughs> she point she like, pointed Stop it out. Fucking interrupting. Stop me. fucking interrupting me. But my point was with uh, because Bill uh, really doesn't give a shit if he's hired or not hired. Yeah, right. He does not care if he's liked at all by anyone. Yeah. Um, it's a very freeing thing. And um, the idea that you're not getting to the point fast enough for Bill uh, was a thing that they kept bringing up over and over and over again. Like, I see where you're going. I'm moving past that. Um, was a great character thing. And something, because uh, as you were bringing up earlier, I knew these guys. Like, you know, the guys that were advisors to senators. And they were just, boom, man, they'd be on top of it. And they, they have five minutes for this conversation with you. So you're not moving fast enough. They're just going to go to the end. Yeah. Point. I yeah. see where you're going. I'm going to move to that because I've only got five minutes. I have another meeting in literally three minutes now. We've already spent two minutes me explaining that I have to have another meeting. Um, so that to me was like what I was trying to do with interrupting her that much. And the fact that she totally yes and by saying, you know, you're the interrupty guy and let mm -hmm. me finish mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And then it worked its way into the show. When I read it, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. It's yeah. It's fun, it's right? It's a neat, it's a neat discovery. This to never see it. happens. Yeah. Well, the big step for any actor coming into that process is to remove the burden of being funny. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's right. like you said, it's like, let's just behave in the scene as if it's happening. Yeah, that's right. And really, that's great. And also all the, the minutia of, we yeah. find and all the bits of business that yeah. make it lively and real will be reflected on camera at That's some right. point. And, but inevitably funny things happen, but you don't have to oh my worry God, about it's it. It's a hilarious show. Sure. But part of it is that, uh, you guys are playing the scenes for real. Yeah. And in there, there, I don't know if it was initially like that, but I'm sure one of the things that at like rewatching it, uh, over the, uh, like rewatching it, uh, over the last couple of days, there is just a great. Uh, there is just like a sort of classic power dynamic there of uh, there's a power reversal in that she's the vice president. She should be way more powerful than you, but you are high status. 
at that table in talking to her. Like, 100%. you have no interest in this job. You don't need it. You don't want it. You get to be incredibly honest. You get to... And I love... And, like, there is sort of, like, a classic joke in there, too, of uh, fire Dan. He's all eyelashes and teeth, and he'd yeah. make a great croupier. croupier. Fire <laughs> Amy for just... For la- allowing you to be here with me. Fire <laughs> I would her. never allow that. I would never, yeah, never allow, allow that. that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, ultimately, it gets to get... It's like... Uh, it's almost like the... the uh, Homer Simpson, when he's cutting all the kids from the football team, <laughs> he's like, cut, cut, cut. Okay, if I didn't call your name, you're cut. Except you, you're cut. <laughs> like, it's that kind of thing of like, all, like fire everybody. Well, yeah. of course not Gary. Oh, also fire Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Also yeah. that too. <laughs> Classic comedy. I want to point out a good Mike line where he says, all my troops are in the bag, so I have to get them to the doctor so they can begin the assault on Egg Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Erickson plants a lot of uh, plants a lot of ideas. Like you say, the thing about you're 30 yards ahead when you should be should be 30 miles ahead. Yeah, yeah. She goes back to the office, and all you can tell all she is thinking about is that. firing yeah. all. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. It's on her the face. first thing she says is, "What's up with Maddox?" I, I'm 30 yards ahead, and I should. Yeah, be she three repeats miles what ahead. he says. Yeah, just repeats it, and you can tell that she just has everybody on a firing line yeah. as soon as she gets yeah. Bill Erickson. Well, you said, you say at the end of that first meeting, you say, because I can take you, you have a very good ending line, which I don't remember. You're basically saying, I can make you the person that you want. I can take <laughs> yeah, you to the place you want to be. The, the, the and, most powerful person in the world. In the world. And she does and like she has the this Selena big old, smile. lovely like, yeah. ooh, I've never thought of that. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like you planted like world power in her head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what Bill was able to do. Is yeah. He knew people's motivations really, really quickly. Um, yeah. And now there's one thing I want to... That. Sue and Kent are flirtatious in this. Is there a moment where he goes, did you get my text? Do you remember this moment? Yes. No, I don't remember. She, she goes, says something like, I did. He's like, you didn't respond. And she says, oh, there's, there's no responding there's to that. There's no responding to that. <laughs> there's sort of this teased out relationship between Sue and Kent that yeah. started in season two. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That the yeah. minute it appeared in like a script at a table read, everyone's like, oh my God, it's so awesome if they got together. Right, right. And so they that, have a nice implied they ever outside do, of There work. are no details ever no. given, but you know when they're in love and you know when they're in a fight. Like, you, because every, like, that entire thing was subtext of they are in a huge fight. Yeah. A huge fight. But you have no idea what it's for. And that is just one of the great things about Gary and Sufi throughout that entire yeah. thing is that they can play all that, all that. subtext yeah. so yeah. And they're such professionals that they're not going to bring it up. I mean, they're yes. not going to talk about it yeah. at work, but they're going to go, since you asked. This is, yeah. I talk about this a lot when it comes to like relationships. My little, my little brother and my, and his wife like live in like kind of off the grid in like a very tiny house. Okay. And, uh, uh, like one room, I think it's about the size of this room and they have two kids. They have like, they've expanded, they've built on to it, but it's okay. like out in the woods. They don't have plumbing. They have yeah. two kids in a room this size. Wow. Maine winters. Okay, the yeah, whole that's brutal. Cold. Yeah. Uh, at one point during like one of these long winters, uh, Sarah Dan's my little brother's wife opens a tea bag, and Dan from across the room goes, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> like, and that to me, that scene with <laughs> Sufi and Gary, Implied that, tension. <laughs> it's just you're saying words, but yeah. they have nothing yeah, yeah, to yeah, do yeah, with yeah, what's yeah. going on, and I yeah. fucking love it. And also, you know, another thing uh, that. I will point out in the mastery and the, the genius of Julia is that she's able to play two things simultaneously. Mm-hmm. 100%. And make both of them yeah. funny. Yes. And uh, I, as someone who's watched comedy, my whole lot, comedy is the reason that I got into show business, period. It's, it's so masterful. It's so incredibly beautiful to mm-hmm. watch. It's like somebody, you know, like a gymnast pulling off the perfect jump where you're like, oh my God, humans can do that? That's, that's a remarkable thing. And that episode is, is a good example of that, where she is being pleasant to Bill at that time, but in her head, she's like, oh my God, he's totally right. Yeah. yeah. And she plays them at the same time. Yeah. And it's just, she's so good. For also like in that when they go, they have to like go to Maddox's for the weekend because mm-hmm. or she gets invited up there and she's like, oh, I've got a great idea. I'm going to offer him vice president. He's my very favorite line in that scene, scene yeah. 
is when Maddox is in the river and Jonah says something, he's like, shut up. Shut up. He says <laughs> it's so like a slap in the face. Yeah. He doesn't. Like, there's some <laughs> well-worded jokes in beef we always talk yeah. about, and there's just the blunt, like, yeah. clumsy, like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. I say, That's like, you so know, funny. good stance, sir, a very yeah. wide base. And then it's like, I'd hate to be a fish in your river. <laughs> <Dude>. Shut up. <laughs> like, you just so mean. I'd hate to but be a fish Here's in your another river. reason why Julia is incredible at uh -huh. what she does, is that in that river, it was fucking freezing that day yeah. and that river that they were in like they were in waders or yeah. whatever but it's still fucking oh, doesn't really insulate cool. you right? and then you know at, by the time they are doing that last thing of like when the fish gets away yeah i mean like both dan and julia like their waders are full of freezing water mm. i was on the shore in full like in a full suit with thermals and were, on and you were and freezing. i was upset and she's like in the river getting yeah. soaked, still committing to like Dan letting the the fish get away and her being like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> like, was that a real fish, by the way? I think it was a fake one. A fake motorized one? It was a real fish like that just. was dead. Okay. That, that they had hooked on. Yeah. And they like, you know, there was like a guy yeah. with a fish on a hook pulling. Okay. It's very and hard to work with live fish. I had to do it on office space. And uh, the the um, there was a canoe scene. It was cut, but they I think they show us in a canoe at some point. Mm -hmm. So that part is in. But uh, we were supposed to like catch a fish, and and uh, and the fish went into shock and died. And so I had to pretend that the fish was oh. alive by oh. sort of wiggling it like that. Um, Wait, did you know Gary Cole on Office Space? No, we didn't. You work did together. Didn't work together. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, I, I had a question for you. Oh, yeah. Why did Ryantology fail? Because now you're you're jumping. You you had Ryantology in episodes like That's two right. through no, four. In three, I think in episode. F oh no, we're gonna Danny Chung? In episode four. We're going to Clovis, and in Clovis, I get a massive offer for like somebody's gonna buy Ryantology oh, okay. for like four million dollars, and something happens where I both don't get the money and it gets shut down. Got it. But okay. I haven't rewatched that one. I'm yet. just curious. Okay. Can so I go by, back to that one thing yeah, about yeah. fish and the the yeah. thing? Uh, not my story about Office Space, which, by the way, I just but, dropped, which is incredible. No, I love how, it. Did, how did I work? You that have an in? interesting history. Uh, but anyway, it. no. My point was uh, that she probably didn't complain. No. Oh, no, 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 no. She and fully, yeah, she not only fully went for it, but was like, yeah, player. absolutely, I'm getting in the river. She's like remarkable hero. that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had, uh, I'm sure you guys remember this, the um, uh, convention scene or whatever it was where we were all in that hotel suite. That was 21 hours. Yeah. It was 21 hours, which is officially the longest day I've had in show business. Is that season four, like during season the con the convention? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and once I passed 16 and a half, round 17, I really wanted to complain. But she didn't say a thing. Even when we were just all sitting together. Yeah. She never complained. Yeah. Oh, this is taking a long time. Would have been the... Only door I needed yeah. open. <laughs> you just kick it open like yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would have been like the Kool Aid man. And I would have <laughs> yeah, fucking a right. I yeah. would have said Gang that would have been my big opening. pile on that idea. Oh yeah. my yeah. god, yeah. But she never, no, not even hinted. Oh, this is a long day. Nothing. No, when we passed the twenty hour mark, I was wait because she, by the way, had every other fucking line. Yeah, yeah. I had like, I don't know. I don't know how many lines. I wasn't counting, but I didn't have, I wasn't carrying every other line. And she, she worked for 21 hours yeah. without complaining. I've said this before, but there was a day where like the AC went out, like in like, you know, like early oh in the mattress factory. Cause we were either shooting in the blazing hot or the freezing cold in Baltimore. Yeah, all the time. And there was no in between. Yeah. And there was like a blazing hot day in the mattress factory. The AC goes out and we're all like in wool suits and I'm like wearing a sweater under a wool suit. Yeah. And nobody complained. Nobody complained yeah. because Julia never broke. But it is she, like you're doing. You're looking at the boss and yes. going, well, if she's working harder than all of us and she's not complaining, I'm not going to say a goddamn word. One thing I try to explain to people that aren't in show business is the hierarchy as far as the numbers are concerned. Yeah. Yeah. And people don't get that that's real. They think that it's fake. It's not. It's reinforced continually by the producers and the crew mm -hmm. where they call you by your number um, because it's like, it's like the king, and then there's the barons, yeah. and then there's the dukes, and we then got, there's the yeah, number one's on her way. Number three's already up. There. It's reinforced. Yeah, 
And I've been on movies where like number one is like the best, like yeah. Julia, like right. the best yeah. team player, never complain, always yeah, Sandra Bullock and, is that and way, super but. talented. Yeah, get also, and then people who are like five and six are like showing up late yeah. and like <laughs> fucking off production, and it's yeah. like, don't you pay? Aren't you paying attention to what's happening oh, up yeah, top? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the most entitled person to show up late isn't showing up like it doesn't yes it's mind-boggling to me and yeah. you will hear crew members say can you believe number five is fucking up like this wow i have not heard that i have I heard it. that i have i believe because it. they're like you were number five on that particular <laughs> show can you believe this fucking guy no because it was like they're essentially saying in the hierarchy you're totally unaware that you are number fucking five because mm -hmm. the way you're acting right now is like you're number one. Like we're supposed to be putting up with your bullshit because you're the one that's sailing the boat. You know, you're the one that's putting butts in the seats or eyes on yes. the screen, however yes. you want to put it. You're yes. not. You're here to yes. fill out the cast. Yes. 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 That's what you're here 100%. for. 100%. Yeah. And um, so if number one doesn't bitch, yeah. you can't. You can't. You can't. Well, in many ways, like Julia gets the show going, doesn't she? Once they have Julia, once Arm says, I'd yeah. like her, once she says, I'll do the show, then the show's a go. So she's basically the reason the show starts, right? Yeah, yeah, like in yeah, a way, yeah. like she's yeah, number right. one. And it doesn't yeah. make any sense. And if also you don't the way that it keeps going. That, yeah. It's not just Armando and the writing, which is incredibly brilliant. It's incredible. And the rest of you. But the fact that um, she pulled off this truly amazing thing in that um, she's She's a truly terrible person. Yeah. But you care about her. Yeah. 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 And how she pulled that off, I don't fucking know. Because I don't think anybody cared about Bill Erickson. <laughs> it's the one time I played a guy that was really, like, not great. Uh, uh, just kind of <laughs> despicable. Yeah, it's just a, well, not a good guy. you found humanity, and we'll get to this. Ultimately, yeah. you found humanity. With I Amy. always <laughs> love that. <laughs> well, well, yeah, you find humanity. You get married to Amy. <laughs> that but is I, so funny. Yeah. My... I you think off with Amy Bruckheimer. Was, I yeah, think my was, favorite was thing, idea, uh, what is it? Our Dobermans idea. are like our babies. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. I, yeah. Of I course no children. Hands, but of yeah. course no children. When yeah. you are clearly going to be make, made the scapegoat, yeah. you keep being, you keep <laughs> bringing up to the team, yeah. like, well, I'm going to be going to prison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, there yeah. is so much humanity yeah. in that. Yeah. that. That is, I think, yes. where you have a terrible guy that finds humanity yeah. because all these uncaring people are going, are actively sending him to prison. Yeah. Him, but you are still showing up to work. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Even though he's going to jail. He's going to jail. <laughs> I want to tell one final story because I don't know if I'm going to get back on this show, but uh, I just want to tell one final story yeah, about please. that. Um, so the writers were so open to... I Originally, I had a line that when he was going to prison, he was going to be worried about going to the bathroom. And I think it was peeing in front of another man mm -hmm. because they have the toilets in the cell. And... Uh, I asked to meet everybody. And they were like, okay, yeah. I mean, I, I hadn't asked for that before. So they were like, yeah, sure, come on in. And then I go, um, I, I love that he's saying this. It's not enough. And they go, what do you mean? And I go, it's um, guys pee in front of each other all the time. Yeah. And they'll pee in the same room constantly. We're always standing next to each other peeing. Not always, but a lot. Often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one thing we don't do is shit in front of each other. Yeah. Like, it feels too vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I would really prefer it if it were that he's worried about shitting in front of another guy. And they all laughed and they were like, yeah, shitting may not be the right word. And we tossed around the idea uh... until it was defecating. <laughs> <laughs> and we, when I said it, I leaned into defecating so hard <laughs> because we had hit the perfect fucking word. We'd hit the perfect word that I just enjoyed as an actor saying it, but also, as you said to his humanity, he was act really scared. Yeah, like actually truly yeah. scared of that. Yeah. yeah, and for Bill, who is, let's face it, a shark. He's a shark, and here's a shark who's afraid and is now so afraid, he's saying he's afraid. Imagine a shark. But you're getting going, no purchase you know. from anyone either. No, no. one's listening yeah. in any way and being a little bit yeah, they're like sensitive. A, no one is stopping no, no, to no. understand what Gary, you're saying. They're like has a response, but only because I'm saying defecating. It's not like <laughs> he's worried about me. I say defecating, he goes, mm. 
<laughs> and I like that there is also a general idea that everybody there is like, look, Bill, we all got problems. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you're going to be defecating. Yeah. So in that weekend with Maddox, it is revealed yeah. that Jonah is now kind of his bag man, every guy. And it's because this Jeff is Kane. the first mention of my uncle in New Hampshire, Jeff Kane. Runs oh, the right. geriatric this idea of geriatric. geriatric. He controls the geriatric boat. And it is why Jonah found himself working for the president. They were like, how do you think he yeah, got this right. job? In the West a lot. So it was, it was a new idea that had been sort of retroactively applied. But this, and of course, Jeff Kane ends up being a huge part of the show. Oh, enormous. But this is the very first mention of sort of Jonah's history. It's interesting. I'd forgotten that. Yeah. Um, Why uh, cherry? Why were you eating Cheerios? I was going to ask you as an actor. No, I actually made a note of this. Is because, uh, is because we shot that scene uh, all of the stuff that you see on location there, like the fishing trip and all that was actually shot at that house, whichever yeah. house that was, uh, with the river and all that. But that pantry scene was a scene that kept getting punted and punted and punted until finally, this is episode three. We're shooting that scene with Becky, Becky Martin, who's directing like one of the later episodes, maybe episode two weeks 10. before we wrap. Yeah. Like it, like, it's like, okay, we're shooting episode 10. But we also have to pick up the scene from episode three. So they built a pantry on the stages. Wow. I go in and they're just like, this is where it's taking place. And there was that thing of like, guys, why the fuck am I just in a pantry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, I understand it that it's funny no that we're in a pantry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just had to go like, well, why would he be, why would Dan find him in a pantry? And yeah. it was, I was in a phase Snacking. of wandering through the house, getting a cereal box and just kind of eating out of it. Yeah, and so yeah. I was like, he was hungry, wanted a little snacky poo, and I just grabbed the Cheerios, and that's what I was doing. And it also felt true for Jonah to like oh, yeah. be hiding from responsibilities in a closet he's a and child. just kind of taking liberties. Yeah. 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 And he's also very vulnerable in this scene. Like Dan definitely spooks him when he finds him. And there's a very good sort of vulnerability I felt like Jonah had that I hadn't seen in a while. Cause he's, he's a lot of bluster sometimes yeah. and he's a lot of like fronting and like we're going to the top and it's mm -hmm. all happening. And this one, he's on his back heel a little bit, which is a nice shade. And I thought that was an interesting and thing. There, for and there is that thing of like, to that point, I mean, I think he is the kind of guy that, uh, you know, he wants to believe that he got there on merit and yeah. doesn't like the idea that that has gotten around. So when he's like, oh, so why are you talking to me? It's because you won. Oh, you're saying Maddox just wants me because of my uncle. Like, no, I get all this. Like, I did this. People like me. People fuck me. People invite me out to parties because I'm AAA fucking awesome and for yeah. no other reason. Yeah. Like, he, it is, it sucks to be confronted yeah. nakedly with someone who's like, like if somebody came up, it just doesn't happen. Like, hey, man, how's it going? Oh, man, you were so great on that show. Could you introduce me to Julia? Like, that <laughs> sucks. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, makes you feel bad. Yeah. That idea. And I like that he wants to tell himself a story that he's, it's great. It's he's so great. revealing. It's crazy. Yeah. And again, as you were saying with Bill, it's it is humanizing. It's yeah. very humanizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the 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 more Jonah you discover that Jonah is a child, the more everything <laughs> comes into place, and you're like, oh, now I understand. Yeah. And well, it was as a far great as reminder remember, that he's a child yeah. for me. It's like, oh, the soft side was showing. It was the child side. I, yeah, which that's I really, right. Yeah. But going back to Bill's second dinner with Selena or meal, yeah. where she's like, I want you to be, and he goes, I can't be your campaign manager yeah, at the same down. time. Yeah. It's so funny to me. Yeah. And I love, like, talk about classic comedy gold moments where he's already rejected the offer to be her campaign manager. And she's telling him, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to select you. I, I Selena tried the offer or whatever it is. I retroactively <laughs> yeah. withhold the offer. So trying to, save, trying to save face when you're not saving face <laughs> is always funny. And I like it. Because it's funny. the worst thing you could do. But it's, yeah. we do that a lot in this show. There's Especially Selena does a lot. Jonah probably does it a couple times too. It's the worst it's thing Saving you face could do. when you think, you're not saving face, but you think you're saving face. Yes. And also but like, Dan, why are you trying to save face? Yeah. You make it so much worse. Yes. Yeah. I yes. also like that uh, it like Dan has found a way to to get to that table yeah. with just some Maddox news or whatever because yeah. he's so desperate. Yeah, yeah. To to impress her, yeah. and I I remember looking at you being like, oh, Bill seems 
hey, you know, all right. Yeah. He like he's a little impressed that Dan was able to do that. Yeah, because it like took a little balls. bit. I tried but to also, do that. you should you should fire him. He's still still oh, just totally. a totally. No, I'm gonna stick to. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know, but I'm impressed that you showed up. Yeah, she's yeah. unoffering it. You interrupty guy. I just want to point out that's a great bet. There is a side note. Uh, there is a side thing earlier, just because I love this line where uh, Amy is getting worried about her dinner party and says, uh, I- I'm going to put the potatoes out on the table. And the woman's like, no, they, they you can't do that. They go with something else. And he's like, don't tell me how to eat. I've eaten hummus with a pen cap. Yes. <laughs> like it, like uh, that. I just love that Amy having a dinner party is basically her doing it all wrong and yelling at the help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just being like, okay, my work is like, uh, like, just get out. I will be better at this if you all get out. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Ed being like, Please consider Amy for campaign yeah. manager. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's revealed in that scene at that dinner party that you've been jerking off because you jerk off at her house. Well, yeah. one, Gary throws him under the bus. Yes, so, Gary she, throws him under the bus. To Selena, because Selena starts coming at Gary about something. She's like, well, Mike's masturbating in the office. Yeah. yeah. He can't handle being like turned on by no, Selena. So work. he throws her under the bus, throws Mike yeah. under the bus there. And then when they get drunk later, Gary's the one who suggests we should throw cum on Jonah's door. Yes. And he bad Mussolini's like, I'm tired of carrying her dumb tampon bullshit. (laughs) So Gary has some like, when Gary's drunk, we see a little of the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Dissatisfaction with his station or his uh, perception. Or just frustration. There is. Yeah. Yeah. Again, this comes down to, there's one like, uh, there's one more scene in here that I want to talk about, but just like as a, 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 as like a throw in to what you were just saying. Our show has the ability, I think, to balance these two extremes of like very direct satire. And then this, I can't remember if it made it into the edit, but when you were filming that scene of throwing semen at Jonah's yeah. door, <laughs> Kevin Dunn started getting everybody in a chant of let's throw cum, <laughs> let's throw cum. And that might be the least subtle joke yeah. that there has ever been. Yeah. Let's throw cum, let's throw cum. Yeah. But it still works. Oh, it does, yeah. The, yeah, it still works. But Well, that chant started at the bar. A chant starts at the bar. But Kevin went crazy for it outdoors, your, outside your door. This is sort of what I was talking about earlier with season, or sorry, episode three is when they completely lose all humanity. Selena, having been now rejected, essentially rejected twice by, once by Maddox, because they, <laughs> they both offered each other vice president at the same time. He does the same, same thing. That with, Erickson does. Yeah, that yeah. Erickson does. I want you to be my vice president. And, and yeah. Selena goes, I want you to be, be my, my vice president. president. Yeah. So there's that. So she's been rejected by Maddox. That didn't work yeah. out the way that she wanted to. This, the thing with Bill Erickson didn't work out the way that she yeah. wanted to. And Dan, who has been so like thirsty and desperate for yeah. this job in a sort of undan like way, he's just kind of this guy that has now just been left over. And she's like, all right, do you want to be my campaign manager? She's fired him before she... She literally fired him in the restaurant before yeah. she goes, I want you, Bill. And Bill yes. goes, I can't be your... <laughs> yeah. And he takes He's been fired it. already. Yeah. It's sort of pathetic yeah. how he accepts that job. But that leads us to the conversation between the two of them. In her it's office like, at the Eisenhower. Reed, Reed has like this little... He's like, oh, it's actually been a while since I've you know been with an older woman. And he like yeah. loosens and his And she tie. takes her shirt it's off. It's the smoothest... In, their, Reed in each is other's smooth face. smooth as fucking yeah. silk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one. yeah. yeah. And... But in that scene, you like really think this is going to go gonna a certain f- way. And they're like, let's reveal something. Like, let's get yeah. cute and let's kind of reveal something to each <laughs> other. And he's like, there was this, they dared me to kill a dog. And I did. And it's like, what the what? fuck? Yeah. What the fuck? And then she's like, you know, I set my husband's car on fire. Like, they just, they are. <laughs> Which the kind worst. of spooked Dan? Yeah. Yes. Dan like they got a little like, yeah, yeah, oh, you're like, are gonna it really, really like, yeah. like they kind of thought that they yeah. could get there. With, yeah. You know but what but I mean? And it turns kid. out that they should not have no, revealed no, no. these things. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, yeah. The whole episode roll, does it roll out? No, it goes it rolls to Jonah's out. door. It ends with Jonah opening the door and like, hey, hey and guys. Seemingly vulnerable in his sweater and at I'm home. That's your mom's house, right? I'm at my mom's house in an apron. I don't know your mom's there. I feel like there was there was like yeah. a backstory for why I was cooking for someone. Dietrich, is there anything you want to promote? Yes, anything, anything going on to... that you want our fans to know um, about? I'm on Better Things now. It'd be cool if you check that out. Better things. Oh my god! Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a good part and it's a good show. So okay. yeah, I would like to highlight that. Where can um, we find Better Things? It is on FX, and then you can stream it on Hulu. Okay, 
Okay. Awesome. Check yeah, that I've out, everybody. Those what are you up to now? You said you just finished shooting. I just finished a job uh, that is going to be on Hulu sometime, I think, this spring. Awesome. Like a like a uh, a true crime, like sort of limited oh, series. Oh, I love thing. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It like, cool. t- takes place in the late 70s. Nice. So a lot of like bell-bottom suits oh, and I stuff that. like that. It's very Fantastic. fun. Yeah. Um, thanks, guys, Dude, for having me. Come so, back. Please come uh, back. I would love to. Okay, we'll have you come back. Especially... Once we get into those like yeah. Bill Erickson <laughs> going to prison moments. Yeah. And also like, I didn't know that this guest star, I really thought it was one and done. Oh, um, nobody told me like there's going to be an arc. Or well, it's anything. quite possible because when the arm was on, like there are certain people who can't come in and they're like, oh my God, we have to write more for this guy. So it's quite possible. Yeah. You were yeah, not yeah. intended to be more than one episode. I just remembered what happened. All right. So Bo, who was one of the, probably the A camera yeah. operator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, at the end of the scene with Julia, the second scene, uh, when Dan comes in and, and, uh, um, she, we finished shooting. They were like, uh, uh, all right, good. You're wrapped. Julia came over and tapped me and went, um, good job. And then I went, oh, thanks. I honestly thought at that point, like, oh, that's just somebody saying good job. Yeah. Um, so I walked to the bathroom with Bo and we were actually being next to each other <laughs> the urinals, uh, like men do, as I established earlier. And he goes, you're coming back. <gasps> and I went, no, nah. I just told her, like, I'm not going to be the campaign manager. I think I would, I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. I didn't gesture with my hands, though. Um, uh, I'm really happy to be here. And, and, and that was really great. Like, one of the great days I've had in show business. I totally, oh. and she goes, and he goes, no, she wants you back. You're coming back. And, uh, I was like, well, thanks. And I honestly forgot about it. Um, How did Bo know that? Just was, intu- was he it intuiting was it? The, I have you no think idea. You didn't you go deeper. Like, Bo. Okay. I didn't. Okay. Because I would have. I said, how do you know that? Yeah, 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 yeah I, I would have. No, I washed yeah. my hands and I said, you okay. know, that. and I went back to the Four Seasons, had a couple of drinks, and the next day I flew got on back. a plane. And Probably two days later. You and I were going to have a scene in a diner. And I was like, oh, that's interesting that he's coming back for that. And then... Uh, they invited me to the HBO party for you guys uh, for the Emmys, which is the party. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I, we were just excited that uh, we were going to the party. Like Dulce and I were like, woo, because it is the party because movie stars go and it's really fun. What? Magic hat. Magic hat. Yeah. Um, Where was, was it at? Which party was it? Do you remember like no. what? Uh, Paramount? Was I it one of those remembered. like season premiere design parties? center, the blue whale, Oh, the design HBO maybe. Party. Yes. Oh, that would have been the big like post Emmy party. Yes. Sunday, yeah. Sunday design night. center. Yeah. You're right. You're right. So, um, anyway, so I was at the party and just ecstatic. And then the writers came over and, um, they were like, Oh, you did a good job on the show. And I went, thanks. I mean, I'm really ecstatic that I'm here. My wife and I just, uh, it's just really nice to be included at the party. We truly enjoy these things. And he said, Oh, we're having you back on the show. And I went, are you fucking kidding me? And uh, and he goes, no, no, no. Simon said this. He goes, no, no, no. We, I think I think it'll work. And I was like, holy shit! Uh, like I couldn't contain myself. I couldn't like later on the drive home. Dulcie was like, you're not. You didn't play that cool at all. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy shit! <laughs> like, oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? And they were like, no. And I go, seriously? And he goes, yeah. No, we were thinking the whole season. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> couldn't believe it. I thought I was just invited to the party and that was a generous thing to do. And as I said, I was like, if that was it, that was cool. I'm going to go to the party and then, you know, it's fun. What else are we doing on a Sunday night? Come on. Uh, but yeah, so that's how I... That is when the magic hat came back. Yeah. yeah. Right when Simon said, you're coming back. Yeah. All it of a sudden, came down from the sky. Yeah. It, unfortunately, That's the music it came of off the head of some other poor bastard. It's some That's other the poor tragedy bastard. of the magic hat. <laughs> just, he was in a conversation. He was in line at the just, party and they go, sorry. The wind blew. We're full. <laughs> he, was, he was at that party. <laughs> he was and fell like, right he, on my head. <laughs> he was leaning back in the thing yeah. with Shimizu and Shimizu yeah. just stopped, uh-huh. brought him That's back. While he leaned back, that hat fell off. Wind blew up. And they brought in the assistant. Yeah. All right. Um, guys, thank you for having thank me. Thank you. I really appreciate uh, it. It's been so great. Uh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any walkbacks? Do you have any double downs? Do I have any walkbacks? Um, I don't know that I have any walkbacks this episode. I think the only thing that I would want to walk back would be that I love Dr. Peter Shimizu. And yeah, he was always, he was clear. incredibly good at his job. He's a wonderful guy. And so I think that maybe just for the audience, we need to separate, we need to make a clear distinction between 
the the man and then what the man came to represent five years down into this inside joke between us. It was almost completely disassociated from who he actually was, which is just a wonderful guy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He was, he's a quality man and a, a quality dentist. And yeah, we don't mean anything. Uh, we've exaggerated it. Yes. We have exaggerated it for comedic effect. For comedic effect. Yeah. That's a good one. Right? We love hearing your questions. So please submit your questions to castmedia.com sec- slash second in command. Tune in every Tuesday for a new episode. Listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. And you can watch our episodes on Spotify as well as YouTube to get in on the action. As always, Word of mouth, guys. Rate Word us, of mouth. follow us, review us, leave five stars, tell your friends. Thank you for we joining us. We love growing audiences. Thank you for joining us for another Rewatch with Deep. Peace. Thanks for watching Second in Command of Veep Rewatch. Yeah. Please hit the subscribe button and tune in every Tuesday when the new ones drop. Rewatch the show for exclusive behind the scenes stuff, info, insight, and more. Episodes coming, and thanks for watching. Yeah, hit that uh, subscribe button. This is the mouse arrow, right? That's what you're representing. It's a cursor. Put it, do a little circle with your finger and it'll, it'll like be bigger so you can see where it is. Oh, okay.